So 3D collisions have been sorted out, and that's pretty nice. You can walk up to this clock tower and not pass through it and everything. And um, that's all well and good, but there is an equally important topic that I'd like to talk about regarding 3D collisions, and that is going to be ray casting. Now, you may be familiar with rays in two dimensions. They're basically aligned with the starting point and the direction. And they work pretty much the same way in three dimensions, except instead of a 2D coordinate, you start with a 3D coordinate and you have a 3D vector. And in the case of P3DC and other 3D collision systems, the ray cast will return whether or not it hits something. So for example, if I could actually start up this, uh, this game again. Anyway, so the ray cast would return whether or not it hits something. So for example, my mouse cursor is now pointed at the clock tower. So the ray cast would uh, return that it hit the clock tower. And now my mouse cursor is pointed at the sky and the ray cast would return that it hit nothing because there's nothing out there. Please nobody get existential about that in the comments. Anyway, to demonstrate this, I'm going to go into the camera object, into the camera step event, because this is where the controls happen for this game. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's make the text a little bit bigger as well, so that you can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm going to get rid of this comment to make things a little bit neater. And now, I'm going to start a new section. Let's call this, how about, uh, for the lack of better terms, sh shooting. Because that's a good way to visualize ray casting if you are playing an FPS game. The bullet is essentially a ray with a point and a vector. So if mouse check pressed, mouse check pressed, mouse check button pressed. And we're going to take the left mouse button because that's usually the shoot button in FPS games. As far as I know. And firstly we're going to need a vector which represents uh, where the camera is looking. And that can be obtained quite simply with uh, the same vector that has been passed. Well, it's not so much a vector as it is a start and an end point, but in D3D set projection. So I'm going to take this, copy it out of there. I'm going to go and paste it down here for future reference. That's going to cause a syntax error, but I don't really care because I don't actually need to keep it there. So let's copy var x vector is the cosine of the degree, or the radian version rather, of the direction, and the y vector is going to be r, vector with an r, is going to be the negative sine of the radian version of the direction, and the z vector is going to be also the negative sine of the degree of the radian version, I said it again, the radian version of the pitch. And after that we can call a function called p3dc ray still. I have to look down at my notes to remember that name. And it's going to take a couple arguments. It's going to take first the collision model. Uh, the collision model, collision map being defined in the world's create event, if you remember. Down here, collision map equals P3DC begin model, and then you add the clock tower and the floor. And it's going to take a, uh, a location in three dimensions, so that is going to be, in this case, the cameras X, Y, and Z plus 32, because that's essentially where your eyes are in this game. And it's going to take X vector y vector and z vector. And this isn't going to do anything on its own, it's just going to cast a ray from the camera's eyes and it's going to have a, a direction defined by the, uh, the x vector, y vector, and z vector. So what it's going to return is it's going to return the distance to the first triangle that it hits, um, for example the clock tower or the floor, and if it doesn't hit anything it's going to return this obscenely large number. I believe that's a game maker. Or I believe that's uh, 10 million, which most likely you're not going to be having a 3D world that large. So I'm going to save the result to a variable called distance. Game maker. Or let's just call it dist because that's less typing. And then if dist is less than 10 million, counting those zeros, then we're going to do something. I'm just going to create a ball at the point of collision so that you'll see visually where the uh, the collision happens, where the raycast runs into something. So uh, the point that it collides with, 
you can say var point x equals uh, x plus the distance distance no just just this times uh, x vector and the same thing for point y equals y plus distance times the y vector and point z equals z plus 32 because that's the i's plus distance times the z I went so long without actually misspelling anything, it was nice. Um, everything must come to an end, I suppose. Anyway, this is the point of collision, so we now know exactly where the ray runs into something. And after this, I'm going to say var, uh, let's say mark, because we're going to be, uh, well, we're going to be making a mark on the wall, is instance create point x, point y, you're not seeing lag on the video, by the way. This is my computer actually typing this slow. And I'm just going to create another object called, how about, bullet. I'm going to go and create that object now. Let's see, create object. And let's just call it bullet. And let's, uh, let's make that invisible because I don't actually need it to draw anything because I'm going to be drawing it in the world's draw event. And mark, come on, computer. What happens if I close Adobe Premiere? That might help. I'm fully aware, by the way, that this makes me like the butt of all jokes about YouTube tutorial videos and that I'm trying to record this on a computer that literally cannot handle it. Anyway, we need to, uh, because we're working in 3D and all objects are going to need an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate, we're going to need to define uh, the mark's Z position to equal point Z so that we can draw it at the proper place later on. And that's all I'm going to do. Um, uh, that's all I'm going to do for now, anyway. Now, to actually represent the uh, the ball in the 3D world, I'm going to go into the world's draw event. Real quickly, if you've watched any of the other 3D Game Maker 3D videos that I've done in the past, you should probably know what's going to happen. Um, before I start drawing the overlay, balls on the wall sounds very weird outside of context, but with bullet, don't ask why I decided to call it bullet when they're really balls. Um, I'm just going to say draw set color C red and D3D transform add translation X, Y, and Z. D3D draw ellipsoid, which I can't spell. How about negative 2, negative 2, negative 2 to positive 2, positive 2, positive 2. No texture. A repeat of 1, V repeat of 1, and let's give it 12 steps because that's pretty, uh, that's good enough for demonstration purposes. And then D3D transform set identity to reset the, uh, the 3D transformation. And I think that's it. Is that it? That should be it. All right, let's run the game. All right, so the game has started up. I'm going to go and face this clock tower. I'm going to uh, click the mouse, and we're going to have balls stuck to the wall. And I have to say, I find this looks way funnier than it really should, because it looks like the wall has chicken pox. Anyway, you can see that it works pretty much wherever. Um, it works on the floor. It's going to work, if I can actually get my mouse cursor up there, on the roof. Um, anywhere that I click, a ball appears, because there's a ray cast, and it now knows um, the exact location of uh, where the mouse cursor, or where, the, I suppose, uh, really not the mouse cursor, but the, uh, the crosshair in the middle of the screen. It hits anything. If I were to click on the sky, nothing would appear in the sky, obviously, because it doesn't hit anything. Um, and uh, that, that is ray casting. I'm going to close this out now. If you're trying to draw a more flat surface on the wall, like uh, perhaps another D3D wall, or like a sprite or something like that, then my computer froze up again. This is enjoyable. Um, then you might want to go back into the uh, camera step event or wherever you're performing the raycast, and instead of uh, instead of saying exactly uh, point x equals x times the distance times the x vector, uh, since this distance contains the uh, number of pixel units to the location of the collision, uh, you may want to say distance minus 1 or distance minus 0 0.5 or some arbitrary small number. 
so that you have your uh, your location of collision offset from the wall by just a little tiny amount, and you don't have to worry about Z fighting. Anyway, that's it for ray casting. There's a few more functions that you can mess around with um, in P3DC regarding ray casting. Uh, you can use just P3DC ray, P3DC ray, uh, which I believe will take as well as an X Y Z for the uh, the ray. It'll take an X Y Z for the uh, collision model that you're trying to do the raycast on, which in my case would be 000. And since I don't need to transform the collision model in any way, I can just use P3DC Ray still. So I'm going to stick with that because it's a little bit faster when it comes to computing. In most cases, if you're just doing collision checking with the uh, with a general world model like I am here, you should probably be fine with P3DC Ray still. But in any event, if you're curious, just look through the list of scripts that you imported. Uh, there's a few of them relating to rays down here at the bottom. Actually, there's more than I thought. Um, there's a ray, ray still, ray first, ray split, ray rotation. Again, in most cases, you should be fine with a P3DC ray still. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. There may be one or two more videos that I may do on P3DC uh, for 3D collisions in GameMaker. But like I said in the last video, this is not my favorite collision system in the world, it's just the most popular and probably the easiest to get started with, so I'm doing it first. At some point in the future, I'm going to make a few videos on at least one more 3D collision deal, which is a little bit more complicated, but I think is a little bit more fun to use in that it has more features and um, it's a little bit more reliable. But anyway, for now, I hope you all enjoyed that and I hope you all found that useful. My name is Dragonite and I will see you all later.